Welcome to Fight News Now Extra. I'm John Pollock, and we're going through all of today's mixed martial arts news and notes as Robin Black is going to be joining me to discuss all of it. Today we're going to chat Jose Aldo's choice for his next title contender. More heavyweight action is going to Australia, and the retirement of a longtime welterweight fighter is announced. Featherweight champion Jose Aldo recently spoke to MMAfighting.com as he recovers from his foot injury sustained at UFC 163. Aldo believes that Ricardo Lamas should be next in line to get a title opportunity as Lamas is currently on a four-fight win streak but has not fought since January. Aldo dismissed Chad Mendez stating he has not beaten any ranked fighters and that Lamas and Cub Swanson are ahead of Mendez. The UFC's return to Australia on December the 7th will be getting another heavyweight bout as Pat H.D. Barry will be looking to recover from his last loss to Sean Jordan when he travels down under to fight Soa Pulele, who last fought at UFC 164 in a horrendous bout with Nikita Krylov, where Pulele got a third round TKO. That card in Australia is going to be headlined by Antonio Silva meeting Mark Hunt in a five round bout. And following his first round knockout loss to Tim Means at Legacy FC's card on Friday night, the secret weapon Pete Spratt looks to be calling it a career after 48 professional bouts. Spratt has been fighting since March of 1999 and last competed for the UFC in June of 2007. He retires with a record of 25 and 23 at the age of 42. And we are joined here by Robin Black. A few interesting topics to discuss. Let's start off with the 145 pound weight class. Right now, Jose Aldo citing that he feels Ricardo Lamas would make the most sense to be next in line for that next title shot. Somewhat dismissing Chad Mendes and what he's done since their first fight back in January of last year. Uh, he has looked very impressive, is most recently coming off that knockout over Clay Guida, uh, but feeling that both Cub Swanson and Ricardo Lamas should be ahead of Chad Mendes. Well, first thing we want to look at is, do you get to pick? You know, like, has anyone really got to pick before when they were the champion? And uh, since you usually don't get to, Dana White might stand up right now and give him exactly the opposite of what he's asking for. You know, kind of make an example of it. Because they, the UFC loves to be in control. At, at times, with certain people, they've worked around them. But they like to nip that in the butt immediately. And then let's look at, at uh, the three guys. They're, they're a murderer's row anyways. I mean, all three of those guys are badasses but I think and I'm a huge fan of Lamas and a huge fan of Cub Swanson but I think Mendez is the guy you don't want to fight so it makes sense that you'd say he's not there you know you always come up with great analogies that I'm a big fan of and it's kind of like you see now with Jose Aldo where when you look at Cub Swanson and you look at Chad Mendez it's like this guy took a history course nailed it got a 95 percent and then a year later they're saying well why don't you do this course over again it's like, uh, I've already aced that course. Yeah, a year of more history has been added here, but I did that course. I want to move on to the next level of history. And that's kind of, I think, what you're looking at in this featherweight division in a weird roundabout way with Chad Mendes and Cub Swanson. Those are tests that Aldo passed with flying colors. Ricardo Lamas at least presents a fresh opponent at this stage. That's a hell of an analogy. <laughs> that's that. a Robin Black yeah, analogy. I, I do love analogies. Um, and, and this one is slightly varied, I think, because yes, he took the Chad Mendes test and the Cub Swanson test, but they are not just a history test. They're a history test and an algebra test and a phys ed test and an art test and a cooking test. They're all of those, and those guys have changed some of each of them. Then, you know, you were cooking eggs before, now you're cooking beef, <laughs> you know? And they've changed the whole course load. And uh, as a result, you're not just taking the same thing. Cub Swanson, you flew out, you threw two flying knees, and you put that guy unconscious. That's not going to happen this time. So we never even got to see you do the test. In fact, you checked off one box and they said you passed. This time that box is not there anymore. People are laughing at us, but you have not stopped watching this video yet, so I'm laughing. You. I'm laughing at us. Let's also chat. A heavyweight fight announced for that December 7th card down in Australia. It's going to be headlined by Mark Hunt against Antonio Silva in a five-round fight. <laughs> I think if ever there is a guarantee that these two men not going five rounds. But also added to the card now, Pat Barry. He is going to be taking on Saul Pulele. Pulele is coming off a really horrendous yeah. bout uh, with Nikita Krylov back at UFC 164. Pat Barry, though, he's always an exciting heavyweight. I don't think you are ever going to see this guy in that upper mix. It's kind of a one fight forward, one fight backward style of fighter, but one that people cannot help but be very excited by and interested when this guy is kind of your opening or second fight on a main card. Everybody loves Pat Barry, and why wouldn't you love Pat Barry? You watch this guy just go in and throw bombs at guys, get almost knocked unconscious, stagger back and knock him out 
or vice versa. And you can throw him in a grass skirt and he's really entertaining. You can do anything with Pat Barry. But the thing, has he ever been in a grass skirt? I, I don't know. a picture of Pat Barry in a grass skirt right now. I don't know why, that says something twisted about me. But HD hula dancer. <laughs> very nice. But here's the thing now, right? Pat Barry on paper destroys that Sao Palele that you saw in that other fight. But what if that was the world's harshest adrenaline dump that you've ever seen as he was trying to put away a guy just as tough as him and had to survive another six, seven minutes with no energy left in his body, with his body burning, and showed enough heart to do it. If, the, if Sao Palele, who's actually been a, heavy, a legitimate guy on the heavyweight circuit for years, shows up, Pat Barry better not underestimate him or he'll be doing an unconscious hula dance. Now, Palele also did have a rib injury during that fight with Nikita Krylov, but someone that does have a history of gassing in fights. If you're one of Paleli's trainers here, do you look at that fight as an anomaly? Do you look at it as this guy maybe is carrying too much weight that he's trying to service during a fight that maybe we, when we want to take some weight off of him without compromising power? What is it with Saul Paleli? Because th this has shown to be a bit of a trend for this guy. Well, you look at it and you go, First, let's make sure you're doing the maximum amount of strength and conditioning you can possibly do. There's something called EDTs, escalating density training, that you do in the last few weeks of, of training. That, that gets you in great shape. But assuming he's already doing all that, it may be a mental thing, where this guy's just running out. He's a, a racehorse that's running 800 meters, and in the first 50, he's burning all his gas. And if that's the case, it's a mental thing. But either way, this is a really exciting fight. If, Sal, if the, the, the Sal Palele that is as dangerous as he's been in the past shows up, Pat Barry and him is good times. Yeah, well, it looks like a December the 7th being earmarked for a couple of knockouts there on, on that card in Australia. But uh, in the f nearest of, uh, of fights coming up, we have UFC 165 that is coming up in Toronto this weekend. Interest is certainly ramping up for, for this card in particular. Uh, I guess what is kind of standing out for you on this main card quickly is we'll be talking about it a lot more this week. Yeah, I mean, well, let's talk about two heavyweights right there. That'll be a lot of fun. It, it is actually a really good main card. You've got two heavyweights that used to be friends fighting. You've got two grinder, a Russian grinder and, a, and an American grinder who just got busted for weed on opening up the, the night. You've got the great, one of the greatest fighters of all time on the main event. There's a lot of good stuff on this main card. Brendan Schaub, Matt Mitrion, they'll be in heavyweight action this, this coming weekend. UFC 165 in Toronto and more Fight News Now Extra is coming at you.